So we're joined in this with two great guests. Jonathan Herzog was Andrew Yang's Iowa campaign coordinator and is now himself a candidate for Congress in New York's 10th district. Tom Shaughnessy is co-founder of the digital asset research firm Delphi Digital and host of the Chain Reaction podcast. Jonathan, Tom, thank you so much for hanging out today. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> Uh, so Jonathan, let's start with you. Uh, let's take, let's go back three months ago, four months ago, six months ago. What was the state of the discussion of UBI kind of pre COVID-19 and how have you seen that shift over the last few months? Absolutely. Well, first of all, happy having day. It's an honor to be here within a few hours of the having, it feels like we're having our own 2020, um, quarantine party <laughs> together here next time though. The having block will be mined in the United States and everyone, every American will own Bitcoin through perhaps a crypto universal basic income. But as you said, I was part of the founding team that helped build the crypto candidate, Andrew Yang's 2020 presidential campaign. And certainly <laughs> we can never have imagined um, that just two months after the presidential campaign was terminated, um, we're seeing universal basic income enter the fore, enter the mainstream, and has now been uh, endorsed or supported from everyone from the Pope <laughs> to AOC to Steve Mnuchin to Mitt Romney to Justin Amash, um, and now Nancy Pelosi. And more than 70 representatives have signed on um, for a $2,000 a month basic income for the duration of the pandemic. And I'm now running for Congress as a Democrat in New York's 10th district in part because we have to together end the era once and for all of Ponzi scheme level inequality. We have to together rebuild, but so many of the structural crises we're facing can't be solved through market-based solutions alone. And also because it's time to bring Bitcoin and blockchain innovation right back here to New York and to the United States. So as someone who watched that campaign very carefully and was even in the uh, Yang Dao, uh, not sure if you're <laughs> familiar, <laughs> um, one of the arguments that I really remember uh, from the campaign trail was that automation and the increasing waterline with more automation um, would, be, uh, would be creating the need for UBI. Uh, maybe, Tom, you can start off on this one. Uh, has the argument for UBI shifted, and where are the robots that are coming to take our jobs? I'm sorry, I just missed the first half of your question there. Yeah, sure. Um, the question is, since the Yang campaign trail, uh, where the argument for UBI, and correct me if I'm mischaracterizing, um, was really about the rising waterline of automation and job loss that would result from it, um, has the argument for UBI shifted since then? Uh, the rationale for why people think uh, UBI would be interesting right now? Uh, where are the robots that are coming for our jobs? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. I'm sure Jonathan would have a, a definitely a clear answer on, on the econ around it. But I mean, what we're seeing on the, the tech side of things is that we're seeing a lot of automation take place. We're seeing a lot of experimentation with new types of technologies, AI, blockchain is obviously a huge part of that. People are able to you know start their own business now very easily. I think one of the issues against saying that um, jobs completely disappear is that a lot of times we forget about all the jobs that we create in the process, right? So, I mean, we spend all of our time in the crypto realm and we're seeing some really interesting ways on how people are creating their own businesses, spinning them up, uh, basically just with an internet connection and a laptop from anywhere in the world. So these are developers that would generally have to go, you know, win the geographic lottery, um, qualify to get into a Harvard or a Stanford, uh, you know, take on some serious student loan debt, and then, you know, hopefully get a job at Google or Facebook, you know, making some serious money and then also paying a crazy amount in, um, you know, real estate and rent. Today, a developer can, for lack of a better word, not to phase into 2017, but publish their idea, launch a mainnet and create a project and compensate themselves and their family um, for their work from their bedroom, especially, which is relatable today. And we're seeing that all the time. I mean, just this past two weeks, we saw launches from Ave, we saw Curve gain adoption, uh, we saw others. So it's really great to see new ways that people uh, could make money and start their own businesses, given what's going on. Yeah, Jonathan, so I'd love to hear your take on this as well. 
Absolutely. We are now seeing essentially 10 years of change undergoing in 10 weeks. And COVID has now killed more Americans than died in the Vietnam War. Um, it has now, according to the CDC, they've predicted a 9-11 death toll every single day starting June 1st. It's killed more than 20,000 New Yorkers. Um, more than 30 million are unemployed. The Fed says we've entered um, or are entering a new Great Depression. And so certainly there will be new jobs created for the engineers and the developers. Um, but these will be jobs for different people in different cities, um, in different sectors. And so the urgent need for a universal basic income and direct cash transfers is even greater now because tens of millions of people are unemployed and have lost basic access to cash and capital to meet their basic needs. So speaking of uh, the the frustration that people are feeling, I, I want to zoom up this conversation a little bit to talk about, it's not just UBI, right? That is part of this shifting economic Overton window. It's the idea of how the government gets involved with markets in general, right? So uh, this is for both of you guys again, but maybe we'll start with Tom. How have you seen this larger shift in economic expectations play out in, in the context of the American public or in, in the context of corporations? Were you surprised? by the size, the speed, the aggressiveness of corporate bailouts? Or was this something that was simply to be expected after the last decade? Yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, following 08, 09, um, for those who are around for that, you know, I'm in crypto full time. So a lot of people um, my age didn't go through that with, you know, money in the market. But following what happened in 08, 09, there's definitely an expectation for the government to move fast, to step in, to support businesses, support jobs. And frankly, they have. I mean, they have payroll protection program rolled out. There's EIDL loans. Uh, there's unemployment, obviously. Um, I mean, there's some quirks there on it taking a long time. But, you know, I think that they moved, I think the government moved pretty aggressively. Um, I personally think that um, COVID-19 is starting to end. I think things are starting to open up. Um, this is coming from somebody who self-quarantined you know, months, months ago. Um, I don't think the economy... Um, rubber band V-shape recovery bounce back is going to happen because people are still, even if things open up, people are still going to be a little hesitant to gather in groups to go out. Restaurants won't be able to have full capacity. You know, this, this is all down the line. So there's definitely going to be some slowness to that. But I do not think we're entering a new Great Depression by any means of the word. Um, I don't even think we're close. Um, and I, I think that the government's done a good job in helping support businesses. It's, uh, it's nice to see that a lot of our community has rallied around supporting people and uh, their businesses, you know, work from home, all things like that. But I do think there's an expectation that the government moves fast. And I, I think they have. Uh, Jonathan, maybe to just help recontextualize this a little bit, do you think that this sort of the bailouts for corporations has created an expectation of UBI style policies or personal bailouts for citizens? Is that part of this kind of shifting interest in UBI at the highest levels? Unfortunately, what we saw is direct cash relief to people, to individuals, was only a tiny fraction of the multi-trillion uh, dollars that were um, printed for the banks. And really, we haven't fundamentally learned the lesson of 2008 and the lesson of quantitative easing. The idea that we have socialism for um, the large multinational firms, the, let's say, Amazons, the world that pay zero in, in federal taxes and rugged individualism for the rest of us. So unfortunately, there's no inevitability, there's no teleology, there's no natural order to the course of events. And we're seeing this very clearly in still the persistence of means testing um, in our cash relief programs. And the fact that our Congress is still on recess. We're talking about the United States and New York in particular, the worst offenders um, and the leading in infection rates and in fatalities. And the former CDC director found that if New York City had just shut down 10 days sooner, 50 to 80% of all COVID-related deaths could have been avoided. So this is the level of institutional collapse and frankly, incompetence that we are dealing with. And this is really why it's incumbent upon the tribe of reason and the crypto community to have a seat at the table in this moment. You know, power is never given, it's always taken. And it's on a tribe of decentralized um, 
uh, frankly, people who have faith in individuals and not just in institutions whose narratives um, and the lies of which are falling by the wayside. Jonathan, just to wrap up quickly, going back to a point you made at the very beginning of our discussion, um, do you think blockchain or crypto has a potential role to play in UBI? And what would the value add be? How realistic is that? I think there's certainly uh, immense potential for a crossover between uh, Bitcoin and blockchain and a universal basic income, in part, again, due to the power of the decentralization. And if you look back at the last time we saw unemployment rates at this level, you look at Germany um, in 1928 during the Great Depression, hyperinflation, the devaluation of the mark, and you saw a one-to-one -one correlation with the increase in unemployment and, frankly, the Nazi seats in the Reichstag. So this is very serious. And in times of extreme economic and social insecurity and scarcity, dangerous precedents um, can be established. Um, and so it's certainly an opportunity for us to build new alternatives and new institutions. And I think uh, Bitcoin and blockchain in particular, combined with the power of direct cash relief through a universal basic income, that is the way forward. And uh, that's a great place to wrap it. Thanks for being here, everyone. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much, guys. Next